हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई क्लास दिस इज़ रुमाना अली आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल इन टू डेज क्लास एल स्टार लेसन चेंज इज अराउंड अर्स विच इज द लास्ट लेसन ऑफ आर सिलेबस सो इन दिस लेसन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ चेंजेस दैट कैन बी ऑब्जर्व इन अवर सराउंडिंग यूजली सम ऑफ द चेंजेस आर परमानेंट and some of the changes will be temporary but there are so many changes that takes place naturally for example a change of season this is a natural change and regular repetition repetition of sunrise and sunset these are the different changes that takes place naturally and even appearance of full moon so these are the examples that can be taken under the natural changes the changes are mainly of two types they are physical change and chemical change physical change means when a material undergoes a change and when it shows the changes in its state in its shape size and color but no formation of new product then that type of change can be termed as physical change whereas the chemical change is a change when material undergoes a chemical change at the time the shape of the substances or the different materials can get changes and along with the change in the shape and the structure of the different materials it will give rise to a new product so in this way these are the two main changes that can be observed in our atmosphere or in our surroundings they are physical change and chemical change in simple words we can say that physical change is a change in which the shape size color and the state of the material can get changes but no new product will form but in case of chemical change along with the change in the composition shape and state of the materials the new product will also form let us take some examples to understand more clearly about physical and chemical changes in the physical changes we can take an example of so change of ice into water or we can say it as melting of ice this is a physical change we cannot find any new product state of water will get changes so it is a physical change and the other example is solidification of ghee coconut oil in winter these are all physical changes that shows the change in the state in the shape or in the size of the material and the different substances but they do not form any new product so this is called as physical change these are the different examples that can be taken under physical change now let us take the examples of chemical change so here we can take an example like rusting of iron it's a chemical change and even galvanization in this chapter we are going to Uh, learn about the different chemical changes in detail so these are certain examples that can be taken under physical as well as chemical change let us take some examples under the chemical changes so here when we burn wood or a piece of paper the other certain materials that can catch us fire so when we burn these materials they are going to form a new product like we can get a new product which will be black in color it will different from the original one so burning of wood paper will give a product so this is called as chemical change whenever we are getting a new product that change is called as chemical change when there is a change in the different properties of the material but there will be no any formation of a new product then that type of change is called as physical change so this is how the changes are classified into two main types that are physical and chemical in the physical change we can uh, take more examples like when we fill the air into the cycle tires or tubes then they show the changes in their shape this is also an example of physical change like this there are many many changes that can be seen in our surroundings let us see some of the activities to understand the difference between the physical change as well as the chemical changes so first we'll do the activity to observe the physical change we'll take a beaker and we'll pour some ice pieces into it after taking ice cubes into the beaker just heat it for a while when you start heating the beaker that contains ice cubes in it 
the ice cubes which are present inside the beaker they will start melting they melts and changes into water the ice cubes will become liquid now when you heat further for more period of time and when you increases the temperature rapidly or in a higher amount at the time this water gets changes into water vapor that means the water turns into steam in this way the solid form of water will become liquid on heating and on further heating this liquid will become a gaseous form that is in the form of water vapor it releases out when this water vapor touches the cool surface yes or when the temperature becomes cool these water vapor changes into water and this water on further cooling it will become ice so in this way we can uh, see the changes that takes place in the state of water from the solid state it will become liquid on heating and on further heating it will become a gaseous form this gaseous form when the temperature becomes cool it will turns into liquid form that is into water and then this water on further cooling it will changes into a solid form that is ice in such a way the different changes can takes place but here we cannot uh, find any new product that is formed the water is a product here the water is only the product that shows the changes in their state so here there is no any product formation takes place this is called as physical change so let us do an activity to understand about the chemical change here we are taking a piece of wood a piece of paper and a piece of cotton these are the materials that are required to do the activity after taking all these materials just burn all these materials at the end you will find a black color material is formed this black color product which is formed after burning these substances this one is a new product which is different from the original one so the change in the solid and the formation of a new product this is called as chemical change so these are the two activities that explains us about the physical change as well as chemical change now we are going to discuss about the rusting of iron when the iron nail iron gauge or any material which is made up of iron is exposed to the air then we can find a brown material which comes over the surface so that brown material formed when it is exposed to the oxygen that is present in the air and that is nothing but rusting of iron this is a chemical change what are the different reactions that takes place in the process of rusting let us see so this one is an iron nail when the iron is exposed to air it reacts with the oxygen that is present in the air and even with the moisture that is found in the air when it reacts with these things that are present in the air as a result it forms a new product that is iron oxides in the form of rust so this is the reaction that takes place which is termed as rusting of iron when any iron material is exposed or when it is kept open it reacts with the oxygen and the moisture which is present in the air and it results in the formation of a compound and a new product which is called as iron oxide as rust and this process is termed as rusting of iron so as the new product is formed this is not a physical change but it is a chemical change the next reaction is with the magnesium ribbon when we burn magnesium ribbon in the presence of oxygen then magnesium reacts with the oxygen and it forms a product called magnesium oxide and this magnesium oxide again undergoes one more reaction to form a different product like when it reacts with the water molecule or reacts with the moisture that is found in the air it will form magnesium hydroxide in such a way we can find the different products when the iron and magnesium reacts with the oxygen and moisture that is present in the air when an iron reacts with the oxygen and moisture present in the air it forms iron oxides as rust this reaction is called as rusting of iron 
and when magnesium ribbon burns in the presence of oxygen it will form oxygen oxide when this reacts with the molecule of a water then it forms one more product that is magnesium hydroxide as these reactions shows the formation of the new product this change can be termed as the chemical change you will do one activity in this activity we will take one glass tumbler and will fill half of the glass tumbler with water after taking water just add one spoon of copper sulfate so here when we add copper sulfate in the liquid stir it well we can get a copper sulfate solution this copper sulfate solution can be taken into two beakers to separate beaker and this copper sulfate solution is blue in color now this copper sulfate solution should be taken into two separate beakers after taking the copper sulfate solution in both the beakers we have to add sulfuric acid after adding sulfuric acid in the copper sulfate solution just put an iron nail in one of the beaker when you put an iron nail in a beaker and after some time you can observe that the blue copper sulfate solution will turns into green color because the iron which is present it reacts with the copper sulfate and it results in the formation of a green color substance called iron sulfate and you can see some brown color deposits on this iron nail so in this way the iron reacts with the copper sulfate solution here the reaction is given by which we can understand this activity more clearly so copper sulfate is a solution which is blue in color when it reacts with the iron it results in the formation of a green colored solution green color substance which is named as iron sulfates along with the iron sulfates the brown color deposits will be found on the iron nail that is nothing but copper so in this way the different substances react with each other and they form a new product so here copper sulfate and iron will react together and it forms iron sulfate and copper now we are going to see the reaction of vinegar with baking soda baking soda is sodium carbonate so sodium carbonate can be named as a baking soda so when we take vinegar and when we add a spoon of baking soda into the vinegar some bubbles comes out with a hissing sound that bubbles contain carbon dioxide that bubbles are nothing but the gas carbon dioxide along with the other substances now to know that the bubbles which are released due to the combination of baking soda and vinegar is it carbon dioxide only for our confirmation we are going to do one more test and in this reaction we will take lime water these bubbles are transferred to the lime water when these bubbles mixes up with the lime water it changes the lime water into milky there is a basic reaction that we need to remember always that the carbon dioxide makes the lime water to turn into milky in this way whenever the lime water mixes up with the carbon dioxide it results in the formation of a milky substance which is named as calcium carbonate along with the water molecule so this is how the reaction takes place when baking soda is added to the vinegar these are all chemical reactions next one is burning of camphor if we take the camphor in a dish and if we keep it open in the air then we can sense the smell of the camphor which is very strong and it can be used to kill some insects also insects and flies can also be killed by the smell of camphor so when we keep it open in a dish it will slowly evaporates into the air and the smell of the camphor can be sensed by us so if we burn the camphor then what happens when we burn the camphor it will first changes into liquid form then slowly that liquid is going to evaporate into the air that means it releases into the air in a gaseous form so this is how the camphor on burning first it will form a liquid substance then that liquid substance can slowly get evaporated into the atmosphere this is also a chemical change the next process is crystallization crystallization is a process by which we can separate soluble substances from the solution let us have an example to understand this process we will be taking one beaker we'll fill this beaker with the water and we will add sugar into it we have to add the sugar sugar is a solute solid substance which can be dissolved it is soluble substance that can get dissolved in the liquid so when you add sugar and when you stir it well 
it will dissolve into the liquid now keep on adding sugar till the sugar stops dissolving in the water when you keeps on adding sugar till it settles at the bottom after that just keep that beaker aside and after sometimes you can observe that the dissolved substance which is present in the water it can be separated out in the form of crystals so the dissolved substance can be separated out in the form of crystals from the solution this process is called as crystallization one more process is galvanization which is an important one just before we have discussed that rusting of iron takes place when the iron objects are exposed to the air but there are some iron substances that on being exposure to the air also they will not show any rust over their surfaces so why why they will not show any rust on their surfaces because of the process called galvanization so in the process of galvanization the metals like chromium or zinc is used the process of depositing the layer of chromium or the zinc metal is called as galvanization that prevents the rusting of the iron objects here we can take the examples like handles of bicycle and metal rims of bicycle these are the substances that are made up of iron but instead of being iron in the nature they will not get any rusting over the surfaces they show the deposition of a layer of metal like chromium and zinc that prevents the rusting of the different substances and even on the coating of railings we can find the deposition of layer of metals like chromium or zinc so when we deposit a layer of these kinds of metals over the iron objects then it helps the iron objects to get prevented from rusting this is how the different chemical reactions and the processes takes place so these uh, crystallization and galvanization are also the chemical reactions that takes place and that can be seen in our surrounding so in the lesson changes around us we have seen that basically the changes are of two types physical and chemical change physical change means the change that occurs in the state shape and size of the object without any formation of a new product but in case of chemical change along with the change in the shape of the object the new product will form we have also discussed about many different activities that shows the differences between physical and chemical uh, changes and we have also discussed about the processes like rusting of iron and galvanization and also about the crystallization so that's all for today thank you